Okay, we are continuing from, uh, I think, question 47. I think 47. That matter. 47. Okay, so we have fx equals tray over uh, 47 fx equals tree over 2x plus 1 and gx equals 2 over x and we want f of g of x equals f of 2 over x um, which will be tree over 2 times 2 over x uh, plus 1, which is 3 over 4 plus 1, which is 3 over 5. Now we'll have to think about the domain in a moment. g of f of x is g of f of x. which is 2 over 3 over 2x plus 1, which is 2 times 2x plus 1 over 3, which is 4 over 3x plus 2 over 3. Now, to the main. So, let's think about this. Domain. Then we first apply the g function and then we apply the f function so the g function we can't have x going in as zero and then the result goes into f and f can't be minus a half um so here we can't have minus a half so we have to make sure also that not only does the input into g not be zero it also has to be a number such that it doesn't produce minus a half um so let's just think about this on a uh, uh, rough work here two over x when would that equal minus a half so that's when x equals minus four so we can't have zero because g won't take zero and we can't have minus four as well because minus four would produce a value of um, minus a half and f can't take minus a half. So I think here the domain is all real numbers except for zero and minus four. Now let's do something similar here. So uh, just a bit of rough work here, g and then f. So, uh, oh no, I have it, I have it backwards, uh, f and then g. So f can't take um, a minus a half and then g can't take zero. But that's okay because there's not going to be any value of x here that will map to zero. So the domain here should be all real numbers except for minus a half. Now the good news is the answer is at the back for this. Let's see if we're right. Um, x not zero or minus four, good, and x not minus a half. And uh, 4x was 2 over 3. And, uh, oh, I must have made a mistake. The first one? Why did I cancel the x? Why, why did I do that? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? 4 over x plus 1 
Then I'll multiply everything by x. 3x over 4 plus x. That was really weird. Why did I do that? That was really, really weird. Um, yeah. Okay, we're all good now. Okay, I need to take a sip of my tea and uh, my coffee and focus. Okay. A momentary brain failure. 48. fx equals x plus 1 absolute value. And g is um, x squared plus x minus 4 f of g of x equals f of x squared plus x minus 4. Um, that would be absolute value of x squared plus x minus 4 plus 1, which is the absolute value of x squared plus x minus 3. Now, I'm going to complete the square because I'm curious if this is always positive. If so, then the absolute symbol becomes redundant. That's x minus a half squared. And then, no, because it's going to be minus 3 um, minus uh, a quarter. That's x squared. Uh, no, 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 plus, 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 plus. Um, x squared plus x plus a quarter minus a quarter minus three. Yeah, so it could be negative. So the absolute is not redundant. So we, we need it. And I don't see any problem with any values of x. Okay, g of f of x equals g of f of x, which will be x plus one squared plus x plus one uh, minus four again the main should be all reals okay and then 49 um Table below lists the NBA championship winners for the years 01 to 12. Consider a relation in which the domain is the years and the range is the corresponding winners. Is this relation a function? Explain why or why not. Yes. Uh, yes. Each year maps to only one winner. Consider relation to whether the, the domain values are the winners and the range is the corresponding years. Is this a relation? Now this one um, is going to be uh, a no. Um, since, for example, I can see here LA Lakers would map to both uh, 2009 and uh, 2010. In maths, you just need one counter, one con uh, one case to show that something is not true, because one failure is enough to show that it's it's false. Um, okay. Okay, maybe I should stop there because the next ones are the technology questions and um, I'm not sure, I'm kind of tempted to use Python. Um, let me just, let me just pause here, uh, the video. So it says here, I thought these would only be suitable for graphing calculators, but they said many exercises are marked with a T to indicate they're suitable for solution by technology, including calculators or computer algebra systems. Answers for selected exercises are available in the answer key at the back of the book. Now, but there's many computer system algebra systems like Math 
Mathematica, uh, Matlab, uh, what's it like, Maple, um, Derive 6, um, um, uh, GeoGebra, there's a lot of them. But I kind of want to use Python. Um, because I know that's definitely open source. That's a language that is very common. And um, I just feel like if you're a university student, especially in the sciences, the chances of you having to take a Python course at some point is extremely high. So I kind of want to use Python and see how I get on. I might have to switch it later, but at least initially I can use it. Okay, so Python, I'm using PyCharm. It's a very nice, simple um, uh, ID for using Python. So let's start off. The area of the square depends on the length of the side. Write a function for the area of the square. Define area of square function as um, area equals S squared return area. Um, okay. Calculate a six point uh, uh, five. Okay, and then we need to approximate it so that the area is fifty six. So that's the inverse, the reverse the square root. So let's make me think now. Maybe Python would be a bad idea. Because that's kind of, I, I feel like the point of that question is to practice the algebra solve equation. So I'm going to now, now, it's only been question one. <laughs> I've already changed my mind. So um, I have derive here. It's an extremely old um, tool. But man, it is like, just works well. And it's only like a megabyte. But, you know, for such an old, tiny program, it just works. It just works. It's actually written for Windows, but you can see I'm running it in Linux. So it works fine. Okay, let's try this again. I think we can define it as um, AS equals S squared. And we want to calculate A6.5. And then finally, we want to solve AS equals um, 56. We want to solve this expression uh, numerically. No, no, I mean algebraically. Um, but we want to approximate it. Um, two significant figures. And obviously we reject the negative answer. So only accept the 7.4. So um, I guess I could have specified S has to be positive as well. Maybe I'll do that. S has to be positive. Okay, solve system two, four and five. Yeah, and then approximate to two. There we go, 7.4. Okay, and that's the answer for the 50. Uh, the interpretation, oh yeah, the interpretation here is that, well, that's the area for a square of side 6.5. Um, how do you add comments in the Rive? I think it's with a tick, is it? No, that's not it. Is it a hashtag? No. Oh, no, of course not. Um, what is it? Ah, I can't type any comments in it right now. Okay, I'll just say it out loud. The 169 over 4, that's the area of a square of side 6.5.
Okay, can I see now? The volume of a cube depends on the length of the size S. Okay, so let's do the cube now. B S equals S cubed and then B eleven point eight. If you want an approximate answer, there you go. Oh no, that's actually exact. Uh, yeah, that is the volume of a cube with sides 11.8. Can't imagine how the answer at the back could be anything but that. Good. Yep. Um. Yeah, okay. I think I might leave it there because what I'd like to do is I'd like to research what good open source algebra tools are out there that are popular. And maybe I'll switch to using those because I doubt for those few people watching this video, you're using Derive or even heard of Derive. So it'd be more suitable for me to research a different tool it's not going to be widely different in terms of its syntax. So it's still good to have seen this, but I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there uh, for this evening.